Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Making Big Season 7. I am your host A.B. Ravi. Generally speaking, most success stories featured in this series make for a compelling viewing because they portray an entrepreneurial struggle. The odd they have to overcome to make it big in the marketplace. To reiterate, this series is about an entrepreneur's tenacity, imagination and courage. Qualities that make them beat dramatic moment and eventually make it big in the world of business. But this week's story is different. It is devoid of any drama. It shows that you can be successful without going through a roller coaster ride. In 1972, C.V. Jacob, who was into construction business, decided to change his line of business. A chance visit to Japan gave him the idea to enter the value added spice business. Thus was born Synthite Industries in Kochi. Some 12 years later, his eldest son, Dr. Viju Jacob, entered the scene and under his leadership, the company's rapidly expanded to emerge as the world's largest producer of fragrance, flavors and colors. Take a look at Synthet industry story and you know what happens when you combine passion, focus and hard work. You create a success story that is everybody's envy. For four decades now, they have been spicing up the lives of people all over the world with their flavors, colors and fragrances. Not many realize that when we eat Maggie noodles or bite into Haldiram savouries, drink fizzy Miranda or wear a perfume, Synthite is at work here. Quietly, the Kochi-based Synthite Industries has taken control of our senses. Sense of taste, sense of smell and sense of sight. And nobody is complaining. On the contrary, everybody is happy. So little wonder that this B2B player has grown from strength to strength. Witness this, with a total installed capacity of 38,000 tons spread over its six state-of-the-art manufacturing plants located in Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and China, the company produces a bouquet of products like spice oils and oleo resins, herb extracts, floral extracts, natural colors, natural antioxidants and ground spices. For the uninitiated, Oleo resins are pure extracts of a spice or herb. 75% of these products are exported to high quality conscious markets of the US and Europe, while the balance 25% is sold in the domestic market. In all markets, Synthite products find their way into FMCG food manufacturers and global fragrance makers. With offices in Chicago, Colombo, and Sao Paulo, Synthite has been able to serve major markets of the world with ease. What gives the company an edge is that in the fight against synthetic additives, it is providing the world with natural alternatives to coloring and flavoring food. Today, people are particular about what goes into their food. Here, Synthite's transparent sourcing system and clean processing have enabled it to meet the growing demands of the changing market. This has also helped the company emerge as one of the world's most preferred ingredients providers in the food and beverage space with over 35% share of the global oleo raisins market. Our association with Synthite goes way back to 2001, uh, that is 15 long years uh, with Synthite. Basically I like Synthite because uh, they are extremely quality conscious. You see we are into exports in a very big way. So quality can, plays a very important role in our business. And uh, as far as Amol requirements are concerned, we have specifications according to which has, the extract is to be made. And uh, the, every parameter in that specification is very challenging. Not many manufacturers can meet those stringent requirements as far as we are concerned. But Synthite have always risen to the occasion and have given us what we want. But the seeds of today's success were sown some four decades back. Founder C.B. Jacob was a successful businessman in the construction business of building roads and bridges. However, due to some personal reasons, he wanted to get out of this business. So he started looking for new opportunities. 
this quest took him to Japan in the early 70s. Once in Japan, Jacob ran into his cousin who advised him to get into the spice extraction business and tap the home market of Kerala, which is hailed as the mecca of spices. He took his cousin's word seriously and in 1972 set up Synthite Industries with an initial capital of 5 lakh rupees and 13 employees. At this point in time, he also got the support of the Central Food Technology Research Institute which helped in setting up the pepper oleo raisin unit. Within a few years of operations, by 1976, Jacob's new venture was exporting goods worth 15 crore rupees. This number was no mean achievement considering the fact that Indian companies were operating in a difficult business environment. Thus began Jacob's odyssey through the fabled spice route. Being a family-run business, Jacob asked his eldest son Biju, who was still in school, to spend time on the shop floor. Even during college vacations, his father asked him to work in the various departments of the company. This kind of work experience stood him in good stead. By the time Biju acquired a doctorate from the Colombo University, he had learned the A to Z of the spice business. He formally joined the company in 1983-1984 assuming charge of international marketing in the APAC region. One of the boldest initiatives that Viju took soon after joining the company was to set up a marigold extraction plant in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. It was a pioneering effort that saw the company bag orders from global perfumery giants. Today, this business not only defines Synthite, but also offers indirect employment to 14,000 farmers and 2.5 lakh workers. In 2006, Synthite launched the spice division Aramco Flavor India by entering into a joint venture with Aramco of the UK. It also set up Simega Savory Technology with Omega of Austria. In 2012, the company got into the B2C play by launching spice powders and masala mixes under the brand name Kitchen Treasures and Sprig. The initial response for the products launched in Kerala, Bengaluru and Chennai has been encouraging. The same year, the company also decided to set up a manufacturing base overseas, starting a paprika oleoresins plant in China to cater to the South Asian markets. Despite operating in a state known for strikes and labor problems, Synthite has not only survived but also thrived. In the last five years, its turnover has shot up from 874 crore rupees in FY 2012 to 1,303 crore rupees in FY 2016, registering a CAGR of 8.30%. But its margins are quite high thanks to value additions made possible by its strong R&D. Perhaps it is Jacob's bias for high margin categories and industries that prompted him to diversify and enter into the hospitality sector. He entered into a franchisee agreement to set up Ramada Resorts, a luxury retreat spread over 8 acres set against the picturesque lakes of Kumbalam in the outskirts of Kochi. The company also owns Riviera Suites, an apartment hotel in Thevara, Kochi, built over four acres against the backdrop of the Vembanadu Lake in Kochi. From 13 people in the 70s, to employing over 2,500 employees today, Synthite Industries has indeed come a long way. But the heart of the matter is only 8% of spices produced in India are exported. Historically, India was the leading spice producer, but now Vietnam and Sri Lanka have overtaken India. Dr. Viju is keen to change this scenario. On that note, it's time for a short commercial break. When we come back, CMBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi talks to Synthite Industries Managing Director, Dr. Viju Jacob, 
to explore how he plans to double the company's turnover to 3000 crore rupees by 2020 also joining us on the show will be sandeep uppal of hsbc stay tuned welcome back his sartorial elegance and taste for all good things in life are evident from his stylish offers swanky cars and latest gadgets arguably this classy statement comes from the global dominance that is company synthet industry commands i caught up with 55 year old dr viju jacob at his factory in kochi to find out how he intends to double the company's turnover to 3000 crore rupees by 2020 this is what he has to say take a look dr viju sandeep welcome to the show dr viju if i may begin by asking you your family was in the construction business building roads and bridges so what made you get into spice business uh, my father is the founder chairman of the company and uh, he was in the construction field and uh, he moved out he went for a uh, um, an exhibition in japan uh, it's called the 90 in 1970 and uh, when he was on the way back he met my cousin and uh, he was talking in detail about any business opportunity okay uh, to grow in in kerala and uh, he was talking about the uh, why don't you look at the spice uh, initiative the uh, reason is because most spices are grown in in kerala in south india basically so he wanted to look at look, uh, into this sort of a business in uh, spices spices so he moved out from the construction site to the the spices uh, uh, production how did the name synthet come about for a company which is into spices it sounds more like into a plastic industry kind of name see my father initially started this uh, synthet as a brand is to make polyurethane stuff products okay so finally when we moved into spices see, we don't want to have go for a second registration of the company so we uh, stuck with uh, the same name okay so what was the turning point of this business i believe initially you were not doing well and most of your partners walked out at what stage did your father felt i'm your good to stay here basically my father uh, focuses on things so he don't just not leave things like just like that you know he take everything as a challenge so he put every effort into it and there were he had a very good team with him and he worked very hard behind it and that's how it we made it made it happen okay at one level it's a very commodity business so what is the edge your company has visa with your competition the, we are into good quality products right raw material purchase and uh, uh, latest uh, technologies that we have that is we are having edge over our uh, competition so if i were to ask you what is the challenge of your business is the challenge of your business competition is it monsoon is it exports is it a fluctuating rupee you see if you look at if you ask me that question it's uh, it's everything is included in that because nature has to favor us yeah uh, the the dollar fluctuation has to favor us uh the raw material we should buy raw material at the right pricing so everything is uh, included in so that so how do you time yourself or how do you beat all these hurdles we have a very good team uh, we've got a very good purchase team we've got a very good r&d qc uh, department we have we have got a um, uh, new product development team we got a creative uh, team so like that you know we have a lot of good teams good people with us to bring up into that level traditionally kerala and west bengal seen as the labor capital where the strikes are endemic so how have you managed to survive thrive and grow your company have you faced any labor problem at all um basically uh we look at people as not as employees we look at people as synthet family people okay so all the people who are working here is under the pension scheme we are the first people to give the private pension and we used to uh, uh, give them uh, everybody is insured uh, in the sector uh, in the whole company is uh, everybody is insured and uh, we are taking care of the people as our own family members you pioneered the concept of flower extraction and i think you changed the landscape in coimbatore could you walk us through what exactly you did and i believe that it was your baby this whole flower extraction business and people are started growing marigold in coimbatore a lot um flower extraction and which year did it start actually in 1985 86 okay. 
and uh, we were uh, good in growing uh, flower, uh, for example, the floral extracts for the perfumery company. We had a good tie-up with the company, uh, and uh, uh, the joint venture made us happen, make us to do that. Okay. And after that, you know, we switched into Marigold, where the Marigold goes into the feed industry as well as for the nutraceutical okay. industry, where for the the lutein a product, which has been again purified from the Marigold, okay. has been used for uh, degeneration of uh, your iretina. And in terms of, is this a de-risking strategy that you got into real estate and the hospitality sector, or is it some kind of uh, nostalgia that you are into construction once upon and I want to be in that space, or is it your huge land bank? Yeah, it, you know, it's uh, uh, purely a nostalgia to getting into reality because my dad uh, was always in the construction, so we also had a feel of that. So we got into reality, and hospitality was uh, uh, was a, ch a change that we wanted. So we took went into hospitality, and uh, that's doing well. We have our Amada Resorts and uh, uh, Rivera uh, uh, Hotels, so Rivera Suites uh, in Cochin. And both of both the both the divisions are doing very well. Okay, Sandeep, you have been listening to Dr. Viju's journey. What's your first impression as a banker? It just reinforces my view that success cannot be achieved overnight. So if you look at this group, yeah, it's been around for the last 44 years, and what they've done over the last 44 years is to develop a very strong supply chain. We start from a very fragmented farm setup to uh, the B2B supplying the major uh, producers in the world. They've used technology uh, in all the products and that has ensured that they can provide the latest product in a yeah. consistent manner to their uh, buyers. And if you see, that's why if in the financials, if you have a look, the financials have grown and for something which goes back to a commodity and organic, their margins are kept steady. And I think it's the whole business model which they built, supplying to the main major buyers in the world with the consistency which has allowed them to have strong financials with good margins. So it's a homegrown company. If you were to do a SWOT, what would it be? So strengths clearly is uh, the vintage, yeah. uh, the reputation, the R&D, the quality of the products and the quality of the cu customers which they have. As far as weakness is concerned, that is pretty much a sectoral weakness in India where the back end of it which is the farming or the farmers are very fragmented. So when you're competing, as we discussed earlier with the likes of China and Vietnam, that comes across as a weakness. Opportunity is immense because, again, uh, going back, I think, over a couple of decades, if you looked at the sector, it was about flavors and colors. Yeah. But over the last decade or so, it's moved into well-being. And that can only expand whether it's in the Americas, in Europe, or even Asia. Threat clearly, and I think you mentioned that earlier, comes from monsoon because end of the day, it's not something you manufacture in the factory. So you're open to the vagaries of nature. And again, uh, the patterns of monsoon would be a big threat to them. Dr. Viju, you have been investing heavily in R&D. So what kind of products or process come out of R&D? That is giving you edge over the competition. Uh, see, uh, we have, uh, uh, rather than oleous and spices, we have now come out with a lot of proteins. Um, we are looking at lutein and other products. And uh, we are growing in the uh, nutraceutical seg segment, There's the dietary supplements. And uh, we are also growing into spring uh, division, like you know the extract of vanilla and the new products. And uh, we got um, top notes uh, edging over others. Okay, you started this journey with 13 people. Now we are over 2,500 people. Now I understand you are looking at a turnover of 3,000 crore by 2020. So where will that turnover come from? Organic growth, inorganic growth, or new markets, geography? Yeah, both uh, new geographies. Uh, organic uh, growth and uh, inorgan inorganic growth also we are looking at. As I'm going by your own success story, what according to you are the ingredients for the success in your company? My mantra is basically if I ask me is that you know, focus, your passion for it, your discipline on it and uh, you should go for it. If there is any challenge in front of you, don't sit and you, know, you go to sit back and sit back and relax. No, you have to take this challenge and take it forward. So, do you believe in luck or do you believe in God? I 100% believe in God. Uh, difference is because without Him, nothing will happen. The nature is controlled by Him. Everything is controlled by Him. Okay. Now, I understand the second generation is getting into your business. So, what is the advice you would give your daughter or your nephew if they start their own business tomorrow? The do's and don'ts. 
See, I would say that you know, if any business when you start, don't don't think that you know it's going to be a success story. Okay. You have a challenge in front of you, and uh, you should be capable of taking. If there is any failures, you should be able to. Okay. Uh, get some mentoring from somebody else, or you should uh, adapt or take the challenge and go forward. Okay, very well put. Thanks a lot for being on the show, Doctor Sandeep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was Doctor Vijay playing straight bat. And he's saying his vision for the company. These are the mantras he implemented to build Synthet Industries. Be innovative and think out of the box. Ensure you have a unique business model. Don't imitate others. Stay away from overcrowded categories. And finally, discipline is as important as passion. Well, very impressive and interesting mantras, especially the one which says, "Don't imitate others." Before I go, here's an interesting observation. If Henry Ford had done a survey and asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Nobody would have said car. On that thinking note, it is time to say goodbye. See you next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Innovate. Enable.